We've been visiting people who are part of a movement here in Geelong. They've been picking up ideas from this workbook, the Transition Streets workbook. But also what I found when I begin to talk with people is that they add their own ideas into it. They invent new ways of doing things and uh, they put a lot of uh, creativity into it. And they also take inspiration from other movements. Like we have the One Planet Living principles that the council here in Geelong have endorsed. And also we have, and I think that's really important, the permaculture principles, which is a big movement. Permaculture is based on a lot of the observed teachings and methods of many sustainable traditional land-based cultures. Mm -hmm. So the permaculture ethics actually came from a bunch of research that Bill Mollison and David Holmgren did on sustainable communities and what the sustainable communities guided themselves with. And they refined it down to those three ethics of what underpinning most of the cultures in some way or the other. And so permaculture borrows really heavily from a, a lot of sustainable cultures, but you know this is technology that's nearly as old as humans are and you know it needs to be learned. People are sort of integrating all that into the transition street and it becomes a bigger thing. It, but the, still the bottom line of it all is that people are working on how to reduce their ecological footprint. So it's the carbon footprint, but it's a lot more than that. It's also your waste and, and all the other aspects, you know, water and... Uh, transport. Uh, transport and yeah, so on. Waste, yeah. Exactly. On top of that, what I'm sensing at the moment is that there really is this movement from bottom up with the school strikers. And, and with the uh, Extinction Rebellion, protesting harder and speaking up louder about that the politicians need to change. But this is an emergency. The waters are all climbing. And so we have to rise up now. Or we will soon be Even if our governments did everything they could, they still need us on board. When we talk about the climate crisis and the big issues on this planet, governments can't do it alone. We all need to change. We all need to transition to a much smaller ecological footprint. It's open source. It's something which everybody who's involved with it uh, develops and passes on as they, as they work with it. It's self-organizing. There's no great central organization that pushes this. People just pick up an idea and they run with it and they implement it where they are. It's solutions focused. It's very much looking at what people can do, where they are, to respond to this. It's sensitive to place and to scale. Transition looks completely different. Transition groups in Chile, transition groups in the US, transition groups here, that what they're doing looks very different in every place that you go to. It learns very much from its mistakes and it feels historic. It tries to create a sense that this is a historic opportunity to do something really extraordinary. And it's a process which is really joyful. People have a huge amount of fun doing this, reconnecting with other people as they do it. One of the things that underpins it is this idea of resilience. And I think in many ways the idea of resilience is a more useful concept than the idea of sustainability. The idea of resilience comes from the study of ecology and it's really about how uh, systems, settlements withstand shock from the outside when they encounter shock from the outside that they don't just unravel and fall to pieces. And I think it's a more useful concept than sustainability, as I said. When our supermarkets have only two, day, two three days worth of food in them at any one time, often sustainability tends to focus on the energy efficiency of the freezers and on the packaging that the lettuces are wrapped up in. Look, looking through the lens of resilience, we really question how we've let ourselves get into a situation that's so vulnerable. Resilience runs much deeper. It's about building modularity into what we do, building surge breakers into how we organize the basic things that support us. We need to move away from just the talk and the thinking, trying to convince other people and so on. That's not going to work. We've got to live it ourselves and show by example yep. what it's like. And also another benefit that you know, should be looked at is that you save money. So when you don't have to make as much money, you can spend your time on 
better things in a way. You know, speaking of creativity, you could be doing doing arts or music or, yeah. or or things that you don't make money from because you don't need so much money. Yeah. When you're saving it. Yeah, it's a whole so, new world. So it's a whole, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so as much as we talk about these technicalities about carbon footprint and ecological footprint and the rest of it, I think the real big benefit what we're talking about here is that we are creating a, a better society and and a more connected community where we get to know our neighbors. Yeah. And we feel good about that. So this is about something we do together. Yeah. And that's really really important in in Absolutely. in everything that we've been talking yeah. about here when it comes to the the climate uh, crisis, climate emergency and yeah. so on. We're on the planet to to belong, to feel like we're contributing to something and you know, there's there's uh, we constantly hearing uh, increase uh, comments about the increasing rates of mental illness and that the base of that is mainly because people don't belong they don't feel like they belong to anything they're not included in things and and yeah and this goes a long way to, to uh, curing that you know, that's that's, right. that's yeah. part of the world yeah. that we want so this is about building you know in a way a new world a new society a new community and one thing i find interesting is that the chinese have actually for a long time actually for thousands of years talked about something that they call the ecological civilization which is a place where we respect nature and living beings at all levels around us and we understand that we are part of that bigger ecosystem so that's what i'm beginning to see in the horizon that we are beginning to make the changes towards an ecological civilization also here in Geelong out there in the little houses it's all happening it's exciting to see there is a growing movement of, of people across a range of spectrums whether it be from uh, church backgrounds or transition streets backgrounds or sustainability or community organizations or just uh, just you know, people, residents, um, people are coming together and there seems to be a real growing movement of people excited about this uh, change which is coming in that's going to benefit uh, our community and our whole world, um, both uh, socially and ecologically and economically and politically and, and in every way possible. So I can certainly say I've been inspired and, and uh, can recommend you to have a look at this uh, Transition Street movement and, and the booklet which gives you all these ideas to uh, how we can move towards this more ecological kind of society. The ecological civilization. I like it a lot. <laughs>